Ndiye mchungaji wangu Itapungukiwa na kitu Katika Marisha majani mabichi unigata Kande ya magia utulimu niongoza Praise God once again. I just want to welcome you to our service today. And I know God is going to bless you. God is going to meet at the point of your need. And at the end, I know that you will be thanking God with us because of what he has done. So I just want to welcome you, those of you who are watching us from home through BHB. Uh, may you feel welcome, and we want to thank you so much because you are always there to follow us and to receive God's blessing. Let me read Psalms 33, verses 1, and then I will jump to verse 4. It says, Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. Verses 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. So brethren, since God is faithful in all he does, that's why we are always here to praise him and to sing uh, praises to what he has done in our lives. Now let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for many things that you have in store for us. Father, as we continue with our service, may you be honored, may you be glorified, take control of each and every activity that is going to take place until the end, and we shall not forget to say thank you. So in Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Now I just want to welcome you uh, to join us in singing the first hymn that says, There shall be showers of blessing. For sure, there is showers of blessings because we need choir for leading us in that wonderful hymn. May God continue blessing you and using you in his kingdom. Now let us recite together the Apostles' Creed. 
And if you are there seated at home, you are also welcome to join us because you can just see in the screen. And now I just want to welcome you as we recite it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended into hell. The that day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to charge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May God bless you so much, and you can continue doing it, reminding you of what Christ did for you to be uh, saved, and I know you will never remain the same again. Now I just want to welcome Sunday School, and thereafter choir is going to lead us in praise and worship, and Reverend uh, David Nganga will lead us in the part of uh, interceding on our behalf and welcoming the speaker of the day, who is none other than Reverend Moses. Welcome, Hello, sir. children. I really missed you. Did you miss Sunday school? Okay, today we have a great lesson, a lesson being brought to us by Teacher Nelly, and I hope you are all going to enjoy. Welcome. Praise God, children. Welcome to today's lesson, and I hope you have had a wonderful week. Today, our lesson is David keeps, decides to keep peace. David decides to keep peace. So in our today's lesson, we're going to learn uh, or look at a story of two people together with David and see how David decided to keep peace. But before that, who was David? Do you remember who David is? David was a king of Israel, and David was also a servant of God. What is to keep peace? Let me ask some of the questions in order for us to understand what peace is. Uh, has your friend ever taken something from you without asking? Or your brother, a sister, or a cousin taking a toy from you and they didn't ask? How did you feel? Did you feel bad? Did you feel like forgiving them or being angry at them? If you forgive, then we say that you keep peace with that person. So David kept peace. That is, David forgave when he was wronged. So we are going to look at our story from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 25, verse 1 to 35. I hope you have your Bibles, and we are going to learn from that story. In this story, there was a man called Nabal. Nabal had a wife, and his wife was called Abigail. The Bible tells us that Abigail was a woman of good understanding, and she was very beautiful. From this picture, we can see Abigail. She was, she's a very beautiful woman, and we are also told that she was God-fearing. Uh, on this other photo, we can see Nabal, the husband to Abigail. The Bible tells us that Nabal was an arrogant man. He was not God-fearing. He was rough and he was evil. He was the opposite of his wife, Abigail. We are told that one day, David heard that Nabal was sharing his ship. So he decided to send 10 of his men to meet Nabal. The reason for this was for David's men to explain to Nabal that there was a time David's men and those of Nabal were taking care of the ship in a place called Carmel. And during this time, the men of David were tre had treated Nabal's men with kindness. And therefore, David wanted Nabal 
to show them kindness and appreciate them for what they had done to Nabal's men. So the ten men went to Nabal, and when they met Nabal, uh, Nabal didn't welcome them well. He heard of what David had sent them to say, and Nabal responded with a lot of arrogance. He was not kind to them, and so he sent them away and told them that he was not going to show or give them anything to show appreci appreciation. When the ten men went back to David, they reported what Nabal had said and how Nabal had treated them. David was so angry at Nabal's response. So David decided to pay back. And so David planned to attack Nabal and his men and even kill them as a way of paying back. So David went prepared, planned with the 400 men to go back and attack. And while this was happening, one of Nabal's servants went to Abigail. And you remember Abigail was, the, was Nabal's wife. So when they went to Abigail, they told, he told, that servant told Abigail what had happened, that there were some of David's servants who had come to ask for appreciation and that Nabal had treated them badly. So Abigail uh, was worried and she thought of running after David to apologize on behalf of Nabal. We are told that Abigail prepared some of the th things to go and apologize. These were grains, a skin of wine, bread, sheep. All this was for Abigail to apologize on behalf of Nabal. And so she went back to look for David. On her way, she met David and the 400 men coming to attack Nabal. When Abigail saw David and his men, she came down from the donkey and knelt down to apologize on behalf of Nabal. This is the picture of Abigail, and as you can see, the things that she was carrying are the ones that are shown here, and that she's kneeling down, apologizing on behalf of Nabal. When David had uh, listened to Abigail's apology on behalf of uh, Nabal, he accepted the apology, and therefore David decided not to pay back. He forgave Nabal and even appreciated Abigail for assisting him not to pay back for the evil done to him by Nabal. In doing this, David was keeping peace and forgiving Nabal and his servants. And therefore, David did not go ahead and attack Nabal's, Nabal's servants. So that is the end of our story. From this, we see that David uh, kept peace. He was angry at first, but at the end, he decided not to pay back after Abigail apologized on behalf of Nabal. That is the end of our story, and we, uh, may God bless us all. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Chaneli, for that story. I personally did not know that Nabal was an arrogant man. Do you know what an arrogant man is? Someone who does this, and then he walks like this, and then insults people, you, you, you. That is an arrogant man. And we, we are told the wife was called Abigail. She was a very, very beautiful woman, and we saw she was very kind and went to make peace with, with David. That was really nice. And today's story is all about... Uh, I'm not going to tell you. I want to spell it out and then see if you can, if you can say what it is. The first letter is, uh, you can see, then, I hope you're writing at home so that you can spell it out with me. Then the letter A. We go to the letter C, and then finally, the letter E. 
Can you guess what I spelled? Mm, I spelled peace, and that is what Abigail went to look for to King David. She went to make peace with King David because the husband Nabal had insulted the men who were sent. And I want to give you questions, and I hope you're going to answer them very, very clearly. The first question, uh, what was the name of Nabal's wife? I want you to write it down, and then you will go read the Bible and answer it. Uh, the second question, how many men were sent by King David? Uh, how many men? I'm not going to tell you. I want you to go and research, and then you can read the Bible and get the question. Uh, thank you for watching today's lesson, and uh, our memory verse today comes from the book of Matthew 5, verse 9, and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. I want us to repeat. Matthew 5, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. I hope you all got that clearly, and I hope to see you in another lesson with another very interesting story about another character in the Bible, and I hope you're all going to tune in. I want us to pray, and then we'll say goodbye. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this lesson. Thank you for teaching us about Nabal and Abigail. Thank you for letting us know, God, that those who are peacemakers are going to be called sons of God, O Jehovah God. And Father Lord, as we are going to continue on with the days, Father Lord, I pray that you will be with each and every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Bye. <laughs>
Haleluya. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Tunashukuru Mungu. Tunaenda kuamwambia kwamba tunasherekea ushindi wa Bwana Yesu ni kwa sababu ametushindi. Haleluya.
Almighty God, we are so grateful for the much love you have for us. So much love to the extent that we are able to assemble, regardless of the pandemic, and we are able to worship you, we are able to praise your holy name. We thank you for we are able even to come to your holy mountain and pray as much as we are wicked, and many times we find ourselves not very clean before you. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for this day, this being the third Sunday of the month, which is a men's fellowship. We pray that you'll bless this service, you'll bless your people, people who have various needs. As they come before you, Lord, consider their needs. Pray for our church and the church of Jesus around the world. The Lord, you will preserve your church as you're promised in your word. And Father, we pray for the sick, we pray for the bereaved, we pray, Father, for those who have children in school. We pray even for our university students and college students. Bless us because we cannot do it by ourselves. At this particular moment, we want to thank you for the various fellowships we have in our church and also fellowships outside this church. Bless your people, O oh God. Father, we want to thank you for enabling us to assemble so that we can hear your word. We want to humble and ask you to speak to us, for you are our God. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you so much, um, the entire team that has participated from the Sunday school, the choirs, praise and worship, and we are so grateful. At this particular moment, we want to listen to God's word, and our speaker this moment is none other than our very own pastor, uh, Reverend Moses Ongonga. Please welcome and share with us the word of God. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. I am so excited to stand before you and share with you the word of God. It is so sweet to be in the house of God and to listen to him and hear what he wants to speak to us. Today, as we look at this passage, I want to believe that God is going to bless you as he blesses me as well. Now today we are just going to go straight to the Word of God, and if you have your Bibles, I would like to request you to open the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 to 21. That is where we are going to focus our minds, and uh, today we are going to be talking about imitating the head in spiritual enrichment. Imitating the head in spiritual enrichment. So I'm going to read the scripture the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14 to 21, it says, I am not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I am sending to you Timothy, my son whom I love, who, is, who is, in, is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Some of you have become arrogant as if I were not coming to you, but I will come to you very soon. If the Lord is willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what power they have. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. What do you prefer? Shall I come to you with a whip or in love and with a great spirit? This is a very powerful passage which I would like each one of us to concentrate and listen to what God is really speaking to us. Now, when you read through this passage, Paul is urging the Corinthians. He's urging the Corinthians to look at him as a mere servant. Paul comes to these people as a mere servant. He does not come in with a boastful spirit, but he's coming in with a very humble spirit so that he can be able to pass the message to these people. One who has been put in charge of explaining the gospel. So he's coming in as a person who has been put in or has been in, put in charge to explain the gospel to, to these people. He is under a master. And of course, the master that we can be able to experience with Paul is God. God himself is the master 
of Paul. He is doing what the master is telling him to do. Whatever he is going to share, he is not sharing his own words, but he is sharing what the master has put on his heart to be able to share with the people in Corinth. It is okay to be attached to a spiritual leader, but we should not worship the leader. You can get somebody that you are attached to, somebody that will encourage you spiritually. But what I'm saying, don't worship that person. Don't worship that leader. Our Christ deserves to be worshipped because he is the overall. So if, if there's anybody to be worshipped, if there's anybody to be respected, is our Christ. So the, this man, Paul, comes in with a very good heart, with a servanthood heart, you know, telling these people, I have come so that I can explain this gospel that is a mystery to many. The Corinthians had split in groups. When you read the previous chapters, you'll find that the Corinthians had split in, in, in groups. Some of them were saying, I belong to Paul. Some of them were saying, I belong to Apollos. Others were saying, I belong to Peter. So there was a lot of confusion because of the gospel. But Paul is coming in to explain this gospel so that they can be able to get it clear and they can be able to follow it in the right way. Paul tells them, no preacher of the word of God is better than the other. So he's telling them, as you see Peter, as you see Apollo, as they are preaching, let you know that whatever they are saying, it is a word that has come from God. It is a word that has come from God. So they are not special. So we, I don't want to hear you saying that I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. I belong to Peter. I want you to say I belong to Jesus Christ. That is the message that uh, Paul is trying to put forward to these people. Paul wants the Corinthians to know three very important things, which I want to share with you. I want to share with you these things that Paul had in mind and he wanted to share with this congregation. If you look at verse 14 and verse 15, the Bible says, I am not writing this to shame you, but to warn you as my dear children. Even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers for in Christ Jesus. I became your father through the gospel. Now, Paul is reminding these people that he is their spiritual father. He has come to them as their spiritual father. Why is Paul saying that? Why is he telling them that I'm, I'm your spiritual father? Paul is saying this because he's the one who founded the church in Corinth. So because he founded that church in Corinth, when he comes back there, he's behaving like the spiritual father. He is behaving like the one who is ready to bring them up in their spiritual life. So Paul is very confident by saying, I am the one who founded the church. So because I founded the church, anybody coming through here, they should also be able to recognize me as the father, their spiritual father. Paul wanted to see a united church. Because he saw the church was splitting and uh, grouping up, he wanted to bring this church together because that was his desire. His desire was to see the Corinthians moving to together and doing things together as people who belong, belong to Jesus Christ. Every word that came out of his mouth was full of love. Yes, Paul comes in, but when he comes in, he comes in with loving words. He comes in with words that are going to bring this church together. He comes in as a, a loving father. So he comes to these people with a loving word, with a loving father. As a father, he had a lot of love for the children in Corinth, for the Christians in Corinth. Because as he looked at them, he saw them as children. He saw them as people who are thirsty for the word. And so he comes in with a lot of love. He comes in to bring them together to understand that he has come to lift them up. Yes, it is true. As a leader, we need to be a leader. We need to be leaders who are going to attract others to Christ, who are going to be attracting others to serve God. And that is what Paul is trying to do here. He comes in with a very loving heart. He comes in with loving ones. He's telling these people, I don't want you to talk about Peter. I don't want you to talk about Apollos. I want you to talk about Jesus Christ because he is the only one who is over all. He's the only one who can bring us together as a united church. Follow my example because I want you to be like the one that I am following. If you read in the book of 1 Thessalonians, it also strengthens this point I'm talking about. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 2, the Bible says, the Bible has these beautiful words, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, 
comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Paul is still insisting here that he has come to deal with these people as, their, as his children. Why? Because these people, they have known the Lord Jesus Christ through him. So if he says, I'm your spiritual father, Paul is very, very much right. He is very, very much right. And he says, we have come so that we can encourage you. I know you are going through a lot of challenges. I know you are being faced with many challenges, but we have come so that we can encourage you, not only encouraging you, we have come so that we can comfort you. These people needed somebody to comfort them. And Paul came at the right time. He came at the right time to encourage them. He comes and he tells them that we are going to comfort you. You are worthy of God. You are worthy of the kingdom of God. Oh, what a wonderful word that comes from Paul to remind us that as we serve the Lord, we should have somebody that we can be able to focus our eyes on. We should have somebody whom we can be able to call a spiritual father. We should have somebody who can be able to come to us and correct us when we are not doing the right thing. That is what Paul is trying to do to these people in, 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 uh, in Corinth. He's trying to tell them, you can run to me. As you run to me, I'll be able to encourage you. As you run to me, I'll be able to comfort you. As you run to me, I'll be able to teach you. Paul is behaving like a spiritual father. And sure fact, he was a spiritual father. Sure fact, he knew that these people needed somebody they can learn, run to, they can be able to lean on. A loving father will always make sure his children are safe. Yes, Paul comes around and he looks how the people are growing up in the churches. And when he looks down, up and down, he sees that some of them are going through so many challenges. But he comes in and he brings a lot of comfort. He comes and tells them, I am here to make sure that you are safe. I am here to make sure that you are growing in the word of God. Paul was a man full of love. Paul was a man full of encouragement. It is true. As we look at ourselves, our job, my job, your job, is to take care of the new believers until they are mature. Make sure that you can be able to take care of believers. Those that have just come into the flock, those that have just gotten saved, it is your duty as a spiritual father. It is your duty to make sure that these believers are coming into the, li in, into the, uh, into the, in the fold of Jesus Christ so that they can be mature. Your job is to help new Christians to become strong in their faith. Oh yes, there are Christians that you know, they are not strong enough. My job, your job as a Christian, bring them closer to God so that their faith can be strong. Your job is to help Christians influence others for the good news. Oh yes, as you help them, I know at the end of the day, they will also grow to help others. They will also grow to expand the kingdom of God. Oh yes, if you are a father, if you are feeling in your heart that you are a spiritual father, there is a lot of work for you to do. There is a lot of work to do. You are supposed to bring the believers so that they can be able to be mature. You are supposed to bring the believers so that they can be strong in their faith. You are supposed to bring the believers so that they can also become influence of others. It is my prayer that as we serve the Lord, we will reach a point that people will look at us as spiritual fathers. People will look at us as people who are leaders. Yes, so Paul is declaring openly to these people, I am your spiritual father. I am your spiritual father. Follow me because I'm your spiritual father. Imitate me because I am your spiritual father. The second thing that comes out very clearly from, uh, from that passage you have read, if you read verse 16, it says, Therefore I urge you to imitate me. Therefore I urge you to imitate me. Now, Paul is coming out very clear here. He is saying, now I want you to imitate me. And what comes into my mind is, Paul is telling these people, he is their leader. He is not only their spiritual father. He is also telling them, I am your leader. Follow me as I follow Christ. In other words, follow my examples. Copy the way I speak. Copy the way I be behave. Paul knows very well he is hidden in Jesus Christ. And of course what is coming out of him, it is what Jesus has put in him. So when he says, follow me, he is saying it with a lot of confidence because he knows it is not him who is speaking, but Jesus Christ who is in him is the one that is speaking. So I want to challenge you. As Paul is challenging the, the Corinthians, 
I want to challenge you. If you have a leader and you see that leader is good, follow him so that they can be able to teach you the word of God. Paul had a lot of confidence as he said these words. Why? Because he walked closely with God. If you are walking closely with God, if you are saturated by the word of God, you have a right to stand and tell somebody, follow me because I'm following Jesus Christ. Follow me because I'm walking closely to God. He said to these people because he spent a lot of time in God's word. If you are spending a lot of time in God's word, you have a confidence in you. You can be able to stand and say, follow me. Follow me, imitate me, copy what I'm doing. Why? Because I'm spending a lot of time in the Word of God, and the Word of God is continually shaping me. He also spent time in prayers. Spent time in prayers. As a leader, as somebody saying, follow me, you need to be a prayerful person. As a person telling other people, I am going to show you the way. You need to be a person of prayer. So Paul was saying confidently because he knew that he was spending time in prayer. It is important to spend in prayer. Spend your time in prayer. And as you spend your time in prayer, even if you stand and tell people, follow me, they know they are following the right person. They know they are following the person who is going to lead them to heaven. Yes, he also displayed good presence in his life. He also displayed the doings of God. He also displayed what God was doing in his life. You know, he was open. His life was open. It's like a letter being read. His life was open. So as they read him, they could be able to say, surely we can listen to Paul as he tells us, follow me. We can listen to him because he will be able to influence us. He will be able to influence us. So he's telling these people, come and imitate me. Come and follow me. Why? Because I'm not alone. Why? Because I'm not walking alone. Why? Because I'm very close to God. I am spending a lot of time in the Word of God. I am spending a lot of time in prayer. And because of that, I can be able to say to you, follow me, imitate me, copy my behaviors, because whatever I am doing is not my own, but what Jesus Christ has put in, in me. So Paul is declaring to these people, I am your leader. I am your leader. In, in the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter writing also strengthens this point. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, the word says, Not loading it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. What is Peter telling us? Peter taught the Christian leaders to lead by example. Lead by example. Do not command. Do not command. I believe a good leader, a good leader, you will see people following him. If you see people following somebody, that is a good leader. For example, when Jesus was going around getting disciples, he used to tell them, follow me. And when he says, follow me, they follow him. But the leaders that we have now, they want, they want to force their leadership. Leaders don't follow people. You don't follow people, but you allow people to follow you. So if you are a leader and you are following people, you are doing it wrong. You are forcing people. But let your leadership be the one that you are going to walk in front and people will follow you. That is what Paul is trying to tell these Corinthians. Yes, I want you to imitate me because the one that I'm imitating is Christ. The one that is giving me hope is Christ. And because I'm loving Christ, I'm, I have hope in Christ, I want you also to follow me so that we can be able to march on nicely. Yes, I want you to remember that as you lead, you are taking care of God's flock, not your own. Those people that you are telling to imitate you, they are not your own. These are the people that God has given you. This is the flock that God has given you. So when Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ, Paul is saying, come, I belong to somebody who is special, and I want you to follow me. Yes, 
as you lead, you are demonstrating servanthood spirit. That is what is expected. And if you read about Paul, Paul had that kind of spirit. I believe when we read the word of God and we are told, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, then you must be a servant of all. That is the kind of leadership that God is looking in us to see what uh, to see happening in us. So let us practice meekness. Let us practice humility. Let us practice patience. Let us practice loving kindness. Do not use force, but show love even in your leadership. As you are leading, show love. So Paul is saying openly to these people, I am your leader. The third thing that Paul is telling these people, if you read verse 17, if you read verse 17, it says, For this reason I am sending to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. What I teach. Now, Paul is telling them, the third thing he's telling them, he is their teacher. He is their teacher. Oh, yes. The new believers were trained to be disciples. They were trained to go and bring others into the kingdom of God, to go and disciple, to go and teach. And that is what Paul is saying. I am your teacher. I want to produce teachers as well. I am your teacher. I have helped you. I want you also to go and help others. Paul was a number one teacher. A number one teacher of the young man Timothy. Everything that he put into Timothy, when it started germinating, Timothy became a very fiery pastor. The church grew through his teaching. Paul advises us to read the word of God. And not only reading it, as we read it, he wants us to implement it. He wants us to apply it. So Jesus was a very good teacher. He taught his disciples how to face temptations. Oh yes, many a times we are going to be facing temptations, but Jesus Christ gave us the way. He also uh, taught us that it is good to wake up early in the morning to go and pray. He also taught us how to face demon-possessed people. So every time he taught, that is what also Paul is teaching the people. He taught us to be fishers of men, not fishers of fish, to go out and disciple others. My dear friends, if you want to follow Timothy, uh, if you want to follow Paul, we must follow into what he's teaching us and in what he's directing us to do. As the body of Christ, we must show Christ to the world. Yes, we must show Christ to the world. Be an example to both believers and even unbelievers. I want to conclude by reading this verse in Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is reminding each one of us that we must follow him. Jesus told us to follow him, to learn from him. And when you are doing that, it means even our burdens are being brought down. He gives us eternal lives. He is meek. He is humble. Therefore, when you trust Jesus Christ, we are going to be safe in him. So let us follow Jesus Christ and let other people look at us and follow us. Why? Because we are following Jesus Christ. And if you do that, God is going to bless you mightily. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for the word that has come to us. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that you are the best person to be imitated in life. Lord, as we ask other people to imitate us, we just want to pray that we live, uh, we'll allow you to shine in our lives so that other people can be attracted to us, and as they're attracted to us, they'll be able to focus their mind on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to each one of us. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Reverend Moses, for that uh, wonderful word. Uh, may the Lord continue blessing you and using you richly in expanding his kingdom. Uh, brethren, I just want to throw you a challenge that uh, if you are a leader, are you living a life that is worthy to be imitated? And if you are not a leader, do you have somebody that you can look up to? Just 
do a spiritual check. Now it's time for us to give our offerings. And also I'm welcoming you who is also uh, following us at home. You can also participate in giving your offerings through our baby number, which is 668869. An account name is AIC Fellowship. And God will bless you. Thank you very much for participating in giving your offering. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord continue meeting at the point of your need. So now we have reached the end of our service. And I just want to appreciate you so much. Especially you who always follow us through BHB. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord continue shining your, uh, his face upon you. Even as you start the week, may it be a fruitful week. And don't forget that we are also, according to God's will, we are going to meet next week. And I know God is going to continue blessing us as we join together in our services. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for each and everything that, Lord, we have uh, uh, do uh, in our services. We just want to ask the Lord you may bless us. Even as we start the week, you may start with us. So in Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Let us end our service by doing the, uh, uh, the grace, and I know God is going to bless you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Yeah.